أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كريم الله بعد إن شاء الله last week we covered a good amount we spoke about rulings shadowy rulings and we also spoke about the فرائض الوضوء those brothers who were present last week if any one of them can mention some of the rulings that were covered last week because prior to the four fara'il of wudu we covered certain rulings right we covered for example we covered fard we covered wajib sunnah mubah these are some of the rulings that we covered right so if any brothers they remember from last week they can also mention and they can add on right so we did fard wajib sunnah we did mubah makruh and we did haram as well right? these were some of the uh, categories that we covered in regards to the rulings in sharia mm. So anybody remembers what was fard when we discussed fard? Obligatory stuff. Yes, something which is obligatory. It's a must. Mm. You have to do it. If you don't do, if you miss one of the farais, mm. for example, farais of wudu, the wudu is not valid. Yes, the wudu is not valid. If you miss something which is fard, which is an obligation, then that act, <coughs> that certain act that you're doing, is not valid. And it's clearly mentioned in Quran. Yes, mm. very important. It's clearly mentioned. It's established clearly from the Quran. So this is where the difference appears between fard and wajib because we mentioned that fard and wajib they are similar in regards to what both of them it's necessary for you to do it but where does the difference manifest where does the difference appear yes in regards to aqidah belief and how it's established right fard is something which is clearly established but wajib is something which is not clearly established and there's also the difference in the belief as well if a person rejects something which is fard if a person rejects uh, the five daily salat then that person is outside of the fold of Islam. He's a kafir. If a person rejects a wajib, if a person rejects, for example, witr salat, he says, I don't believe in witr salat. I don't believe witr is wajib. Or not, not I don't believe witr is wajib, I don't believe in witr salat, for example. In the Hanafi Madhab, according to us, we don't call that person a kafir. We call him a fasiq, yes. He's a sinner. So this is the difference between the fold and wajib, which we went over last week. And then we spoke about sunnah. Sunnah are the actions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or statements, things which he encourages us to do. Or certain actions which were done in front of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he didn't say anything. He didn't uh, uh, tell the Sahaba to refrain from this action. He didn't tell them to refrain. He didn't say anything when a certain action was done in front of them. And then we discussed Mubah. Right? Mubah and Jais, they are different. Mubah is something which when you do it or if you don't do it, we mentioned what? It's the same. It's, mm. There's no difference. But something Jais doesn't necessarily mean whether you do it or you don't do it, it's the same. Something which is makruh tanzihi, you could still categorize that as jayas, permissible. But it will be makruh tanzihi. And we mentioned makruh tanzihi, what was the ruling regarding that? Anybody it's remembers? Disliked. Yes, disliked. So if a person stays away from that, he will get a reward. But if a person does it, there won't be any sin on him. Yeah. And we categorized makruh into two types. You guys remember? What are the two categories? Yes, tahrimi and yes, tanzihi. Tahrimi and, tanzihi. and the same mm. difference that was there. Between fard and wajib, the same difference is there in makruh tahrimi and what? Tanzi. No, 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 not tanzi. Uh, haram. haram. Haram, yes. Makruh tahrimi and haram. We mentioned the difference between fard and wajib, right? In regards to aqidah. So similarly, in makruh tahrimi and haram, the difference in regards to what? Haram is clearly established by yes, the Quran. Haram is clearly established. Makruh tahrimi is not clearly established. But both are the same, right? Both of them you have to stay away from. The difference, again, manifests in the belief. If a person doesn't believe a certain action which is clearly mentioned in the Quran to be haram, he says, for example, I don't believe zina to be haram, then he's out, out of the fold of Islam. Makruh tahrimi, if he doesn't believe it to be makruh tahrimi a certain act, then he's a fasiq, he's not a sinner. So we covered that. This is just to refresh our memory. And then afterwards, we mentioned the fara'id of wudu. Right? How many fara'id of wudu did we mention last week? Okay. Four. Four fara'id, four yes. <clears throat> this was established from where? These four fara'id. Quran, Sunnah. Quran. From the Quran, yes. Explicit ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us these four things which are for those. The first thing that was mentioned? The f- washing of the face. Yes, the washing of the face. And also it was discussed which parts of the face, right? You guys, anybody remembers which parts of the face were discussed? It's from the hairline to the chin. Yes, from the hairline until the chin. Right? And then if you don't have a beard, it's until the bottom of the chin. If you have a beard, then it's until wherever the skin shows, right? Once the beard starts, wherever the beard starts, if it's hanging from your face, then it's not necessary to wash the beard. We'll discuss that today. You do khilal of the beard. Mm-hmm. So, and then, okay, so one was from the hairline until the chin. And then the other was from the ear. And then the from ear. one earlobe to the other earlobe. And this yeah. side between the ear and between the sideburn, that's also included. You have to wash that as well. We mentioned that as well. Yeah. 
So that was the first thing, washing the face and afterwards, what was the second act of wudu? Fingertip all the way to the elbow, Yes, right? washing the arms all the way until the elbows. Okay. Including the elbow including, or not including the elbow? Including. Yes, including the elbow, we discussed that as well. What was after that? So we covered the face, we covered washing the arms. Yes, doing masa of the head and how much the entire head or how much? Quarter. One fourth of the head, yes. And this was established from a hadith that was mentioned. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must have a quarter of his head. And the last but not least, the fourth one, what was mentioned? The, the feet, feet up, up to the, the ankle. Way. Yes, up until the ankle. You wash the feet all the way up until the ankle. So these are the four faraid of wudu. Just to refresh our memory. Today, inshallah, we will be covering the sunan of wudu, which acts are considered to be sunnat in wudu. It should be noted that there is no wajib when it comes to wudu. Right, there's no acts which are wajib in wudu. So we'll cover the sunnah of wudu. Altogether, there are 13 sunnahs of wudu. I'll write them down on the board to make it easier for us. So the first sunnah of wudu, which we will cover, is the niyyah. Yes. Make intention. When we begin our wudu, the first thing we do is we have to make intention. That what I'm doing right now, I'm performing wudu. So according to the Hanafi madhab, making intention is not a fard, it is a sunnah. Mm. But Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi says that making intention is fard, you have to do it. Mm. So now, niyat, when you're making intention according to the Hanafi madhab, to get reward for the wudu that you are performing, niyat is necessary. But now, for your salat to be valid, the bare minimum is what? Fulfilling the four fard, niyat is not necessary. To be considered to be in the state of wudu, and now with that wudu you can pray your salat, niyat is not necessary. It's for reward. In order to get the reward, you have to make the intention for wudu. The Imam Shafi'i says, for salat as well. If a person makes wudu and doesn't make intention, his wudu doesn't count. So according to the Hanafi Madhab now, if a person jumps inside water, for example, a river, and he goes for a swim, according to the Hanafi Madhab, he has wudu. Because all the body parts are washed. But according to Imam Shafi'i, he doesn't have wudu. Why? Because the intention wasn't there. He didn't make the intention for wudu. Right, according to Imam Shafi, making intention is fard in wudu. The second sunnah act in wudu is Bismillah. Yeah, saying Bismillah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. When a person starts his wudu, he says Bismillah. Now, it should be noted that majority of us, when we're making wudu, are making wudu in the bathroom, and you don't do zikr in the bathroom, right? So, if we're in the bathroom, we don't say Bismillah. If there's a separate wudu khana, like in the masjid, for example, there's a the, the area dedicated for making wudu, then over there we say bismillah. But when we're in the bathroom, then we shouldn't say bismillah. Because we're not supposed to do dhikr when we're in the bathroom. If you uh, read it uh, not out loud, but you just, just heart, you think you yeah, think yeah, that's, fine. that's fine, right? That's fine, yes. Afterwards is... You have to wash your hands until the wrists three times. So this is the third act, right? When you're washing your hands up until the wrists three times, because it is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He mentioned that when one of you wakes up, at that time you have to understand that they used vessels. They didn't have uh, the sink, right, where they could just turn it on and they could make wudu through the water. They had vessels, containers, where they would make wudu through that. So they would dip their hand in it and they would make wudu. So the Prophet in a hadith mentioned that when whenever one of you wakes up, then when you start making wudu, he says, pour water on your hand and wash them three times. That's the first thing that he mentioned, right? In the hadith. So washing the hands until the wrist three times is also a sunnah of wudu. Afterwards, the fourth is miswak, doing miswak. Now, a substitute for miswak, if you don't have miswak, you could use your finger. You could use your index finger or you could use your thumb. Right? Either one of those you could use as a substitute for the miswak. So now this should be noted that according to the Hanafi madhab, mm -hmm. miswak is sunnat in your wudu. In your wudu. Mm -hmm. And according to Imam Shafi, miswak is sunnat mm -hmm. in salat. That's why you see if some people who are Shafi, right before the salat and the iqamat is going off, when they take the miswak and they perform the miswak. They mm -hmm. do miswak. Because according to Imam Shafi, miswak is done before salat. Right? Mm -hmm. And his proof is the hadith of the Prophet wasalam, where he says, if it weren't for the fact that I would cause difficulty upon my ummah, I would have commanded him to do miswak with, along with every salat. Mm -hmm. So through this, Imam Shafi'i saying, through, through this, miswak is a sunnah of salat, not wudu. According, and this is, again, the difference of opinion is due to lughat, due to the, uh, uh, the Arabic language. Right, you know, the Hanafi Matab, they say no, it's with wudu because the word that's used over there doesn't mean right before salat, but it means a little bit prior to the salat. And you perform wudu prior to salat. So, this is a whole other discussion that is there 
It's a famous discussion. Is miswak a sunnah of wudu or is it a sunnah of salat? So it's according to the Hanafi madhab, miswak, you do it uh, when you're performing wudu. And according to the Shafi'i madhab, you do it prior to your salat. And the method of performing miswak, it is mentioned by Abdullah bin Mas'ud if I'm not mistaken, that when you're doing miswak, you rub your teeth from right to left, right? And it's mentioned in the hadith as well. It's mentioned in the hadith of Abu Dawud that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would do miswak on his tongue as well. So when you're doing miswak of your teeth, it is from right to left. Mm-hmm. And once you're doing miswak on your tongue, you do it vertically, right? Mm-hmm. Up and down. Mm-hmm. So that is the method of the miswak. And again, I mentioned, mm-hmm. if you don't have a miswak, then a substitute would be your index finger. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, the fifth is gargling water three times. Right? This is also established from a hadith. That you gargle water three times, right? So first is make intention, say Bismillah, wash your hands until the wrist three times. Then perform the miswak. After having performed the miswak, you gargle water three times, right? And it's not just from one scoop of water, right? The sunnah according to the Hanafi madhab is each time you gargle water, you take a scoop of water. It's not just one scoop, but then from that one scoop, you gargle water three times. Mm-hmm. Oh, before we go on, like uh, when you say gargle, do you mean just uh, gargle, like take water and just gargle? Or should you... Well, you know, like lean. Yes, the the, books yeah, both, she, uh, that which is more virtuous is actually gargling the water, meaning where you tilt your head back a little bit and gargle and the water. That's gargle to the, the person, back you know, to that's, the throat. That's if a person is not fasting, right? Okay. The Prophet of Allah mentioned in a hadith that gargle the water in that manner if you're not fasting. Afterwards, you put water in your nose three times, right? So just you take water, and again, same similarly with when you're gargling water, for each time you take a new scoop of water. So you just take water and then just gently put it inside your nose, and then mm-hmm. afterwards, take the water out, right? You don't have to snort the water and then it goes, you know, it's not necessary, right? Uh, afterwards, what was mentioned? Let's see. Yes, this is important, washing each limb three times. This hadith is mentioned in Abu Dawood that Uthman anhu, when he would perform his wudu, he washed each limb three times. He washed his face three times. He washed his arms until the elbows three times. And he washed his feet three times as well. So this is established from a hadith. Right? So this is a sunnah. The farad, the bare minimum, is one time. And the sunnah is doing it three times. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned in the hadith, if a person does more than this, believing that it is a sunnah, right, then he has committed an evil act. Right? And the fuqaha, the scholars, say that this is a bid'ah that if a person does it more than three times, Believing that it is a sunnah, right? If a person does it, say for example, he does it more than once because he has doubt, he's saying, you know, I might not have covered, you know, every single part of my arm, then that's okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. yes. This is another issue. Doing masa of the entire head. So we mentioned the fard amount was a quarter of the head, right? According to Imam Malik, the fard is the entire head, and according to Imam Shafi, only three strands of hair. Doing masa of three strands of hair is fard. Now, according to us, sunnah is doing masa of the entire head. Imam Shafi says to do sunnah is to do masa of the head three times. Mm. Why? Because the hadith is mentioned that washing the limbs three times. So, so he says similarly, since the limbs are washed three times, then you do masa of the head three times. Mm. But according to the Hanafi Madhab, they say no, you do masa of the entire head once. Because what is masa? Masa is you're wiping your head. For the limbs, washing is mentioned. If you're doing masa of your head three times, is that masa? No, it's not masa. You're washing your head at that point, right? That was the case that when you're doing masa of your socks, you would do masa three times. No. Masa, the point of masa is just you have, just your hand is moist, there's a little bit of water, you just wipe that over your head, right? Yes, in the limbs, you there's washing, but in the head, you don't wash it. You just do masa of the entire head. Is there a napkin here or something? Anybody have a napkin? Sorry. Now the ninth point. So the ninth point would be to do masa of the ears. Now what is the method of now I'll mention the method of this whole thing, the whole process of masa of the head and masa of the ears, right? 
This is done alongside with the head. So this is when Aisha anha mentions how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do masa of his head. So she mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would take these three fingers, the middle finger, mm -hmm. the ring finger, and the pinky finger of each hand like this. And he would separate his index finger mm -hmm. and his thumb. Mm -hmm. So through with just these fingers, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do masa, he would mm -hmm. do it like this. He would start mm -hmm. with these three fingers, mm -hmm. go all the way to the back of the head. Mm -hmm. So the top of the head, he would do masa with these three fingers. Mm -hmm. And then with the palms of the hand, he would come back mm -hmm. and do the sides of the head like this. Mm -hmm. And then with the index finger, he did masa of the inside of his ears. And then with the thumb, he did masa of the outside of the ears. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll repeat that. So Rasulullah so sallallahu this is mentioned by Aisha radiallahu anha, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Muhammad, they also mentioned this. That when a person does masa, you take these three fingers, the middle finger, the ring finger and the pinky finger, you do masa of the top of the head. Mm -hmm. Then you come back to the front using your palms. Using your palms, you do masa of the remaining part of the head. Mm -hmm. And then the ears, with the index finger, you do the inside. And with the thumb, you do masa of the outside. This is the method that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would perform masa of his head. Afterwards, you do khilal of the fingers. Now, what is khilal? Mm -hmm. Is you're passing your fingers through the middle of the fingers of the other hand. So, for example, you hands are wet after you wash them. So, khilal is basically this: you take the right hand and you pass mm -hmm. it through the gaps in between the fingers of your left hand. Mm -hmm. And similarly, you do it to the right hand. You take mm -hmm. your left fingers mm -hmm. and you pass it through the gaps of the fingers on the right hand. Mm -hmm. So this is how khilal is performed. Mm -hmm. So that's number 10. There's three more left. The 11th sunnah is khilal of the beard. Mm -hmm. right, the khilal of the beard is also mentioned in the hadith. Where Jibreel alayhi salam told the Surah Allah sallallahu alayhi to do khilal of his beard. And khilal of the beard is very simple. You just take your hands and like this, you do khilal like this. And also from the bottom, you just do khilal like that, right? It's not necessary to wash the beard as I mentioned. If your beard is hanging from your face. If your beard isn't hanging from your face, it's just, you know, attached to your face. It's just like small, small strands of hair. Then in that, if khilal is not possible, then you'll wash it in that case. And we do khilal like this. Uh, the way it's mentioned in the books is uh, clearly if you say from underneath, you do khilal from underneath. That's what's mentioned in the books of fiqh. So afterwards, the twelfth point is another sunnah is to perform wudu in order. Right? It's not something which is followed. Again, according to Imam Shafi, performing wudu. In order as follows, and again, this boils down to the Arabic language, right? This is a difference based on the difference in the Arabic language. Imam Shafi takes the Quran ayat and he says the letter Fa is mentioned, and the Fa is mentioned to show Tarti that you do it in order, right? And there's a whole discussion in regards to that, too. I don't want to go deep into it, but uh, performing wudu in order, washing the face, and then washing the arms, and then washing the feet, right? In that respective order, that's according to the Hanafi method, that is the Sunnah. According to Imam Shafi'i, performing wudu in order is actually a fard of wudu. Yeah. And then last but not least, this, in Arabic this is called mu'alat, uh, which means you wash, uh, when you're performing your wudu, you perform wudu in such a way where prior to finishing your wudu, the previous limb should, uh, shouldn't become dry, right? So you wash each limb in such a way where the previous limb doesn't become dry. Uh, Malana Sab, uh, doing masa over the neck with your when you do masa of the ears uh, is it's not necessary. That I spoke with Malana Kamal about this just the other day, and he mentions the hadith was mentioned that is a very weak hadith, so they don't consider that to be a sunnah. There's a difference of opinion. You can ask him afterwards. Or the previous limb doesn't dry. The muscle of the neck is mustahab. 
We'll cover that next time. <coughs> it's not soon though. <coughs> Now again, if uh, if you're somewhere where it's very hot and it's not possible to do it that way, then it, then, then, then the, that doesn't matter. Okay, in that case, you know, a person will be considered to be leaving out a sunnah of wudu. This is if the, there's room temperature, right? There's, and you perform, you wash your face, for example, and then you start brushing your teeth, and then by the time you start washing your arms, then your face has dried, right? So then, in that case, this sunnah will not be fulfilled. But if it's a place where there's severe heat and it's not possible to finish your wudu without having the previous limb dried, then that's okay. First of all, consider to have left out the sunnah. So these are the 13 sunnahs of wudu according to the Hanafi madhab. Yeah. You covered these. Uh, try to, it's a bit difficult to you know to remember them, but if we keep going over them again and again, then inshallah, we will become situated in our head. And also we should, when we're making wudu, we should keep these in mind as well, right? Yeah. When you start off the wudu, have, have niyat, say bismillah, yeah. right? Start off with washing the face three times, or sorry, um, then uh, wash your wrist three times, yeah. right? Then perform the miswak. Then mm-hmm. what you do after the miswak, mm-hmm. you gargle water three times. Then you put water in your nose three times, right? If we perform wudu according to this method, according to this order, mm-hmm. then inshallah the sunnah of wudu will become embedded in us, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We will remember them and we won't forget them that easily. Mm-hmm. Inshallah. So any questions? Anybody have any questions pertaining well, to this? Well, the, the finger are khilal. Mm. The feet is, uh, they also include? The feet are not included in the khilal, if I'm not mistaken. In the, the toes are included. They are included? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they are included. included. Okay. Any other questions? We have questions. Make sure it's not a repetitive question. Next week we will do the practical wudu. This is sunnah wudu. Inshallah, next week we will do the mustahab wudu. There are few mustahabbad, and we'll explain what mustahab is again next week. And we'll do practical wudu, putting all the farz, sunnah, mustahab together. What is the tariqat of wudu? The proper practical wudu, which is called. We'll practice that next week. Inshallah. So any other questions, brothers, brothers, everybody in this? Mm-hmm. Did you say you were going to go over the khilal today or another time? I don't, I don't think that's When we do that. the practical wudu, then inshallah, then we'll go over it, inshallah. We'll go over all of this when we cover the practical wudu. Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to confirm again. So during the masa, like, all I have to do is literally just wipe once like that? Yeah, yeah. You just have to wipe it over once. It's not necessary that, you know, you just keep doing it over and over again. Because yeah, the main point is just wiping the head, right? And the hands have to be, you can't do it with dry hands, yeah. you know, the hands have to be moist. Just, to, just to add on to him, if you have big hands, it's not necessary you do this sign and you do you do like that. Because some people they think it's necessary, it's not necessary. If you have hands like this, you can cover your whole head in one shot and that way it's easier. Some people they find this easier. So me personally, I do it like this, put my hand out, one shot, I get everything done. Mm-hmm. Some people they do this, they go back and they take the palm, they come back out. Is the method he mentioned. Quick books have this, but the other ways both are you can do. Whichever way is easier for you, and you don't forget, you know, sometimes you're standing there making the signs and how did I do properly, you get into doubts. So it depends on us, inshallah. There is no difference in the sunnah, though. No, there's no difference. The sunnah is, you just gotta do most of the entire head. So you get the reward for that, inshallah. Once you make wudu, you know, you have to say something. For something. Yeah, yeah, that would be covered in the du'as to read. The du'as? Yeah. Oh, that's the dua we'll take it next week, inshallah. That's mustahab? The duas are sunnah to read. Okay. Yes, yeah, so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said those duas before starting, after finishing, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma jalimna tawabin wa jalimna mutatahirin, and then some other duas. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ashadu wa la ilaha illa Any other questions? I have yes. a question. So I heard that um, if you're bleeding and it doesn't go over the womb, you still have um, wudu, right? The main thing is if the blood starts flowing, then that's when the wudu breaks. You know, so it doesn't, it's not necessary that it goes over the wound, you know, because sometimes when you go and the, take a blood test, mm-hmm. the blood technically it's not going, it's not surpassing the wound, yeah. but a lot of blood is being taken out. Your wudu breaks in that sense. The main thing is if the blood flows. Okay. Mm-hmm. And sometimes some, some brothers, when the blood comes out, they take a napkin, they keep t- cleaning it, right? And then they say, well, look, it doesn't flow after the skin. In that case, you just we're just like fooling ourselves because the blood is flowing. If you were to remove the napkin, yeah. the blood is gonna flow, 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 flow. So wudu broke, yeah. and on every the wudu broke. So it's that if it's just stagnant, sometimes blood comes out, but it just stays there. It doesn't even move at all. Yeah. In that case, since it didn't flow, wudu will not break. And this is true for any body fluid, whether it's yes, uh, like yes. pus. Even if it's pus, even if it's pus yeah. or anything else. After massage, you make I mean, like head massage. Then you like spin the water. This is like you know, in your clothes. Sometimes you know you know where. Sure, 
when you're finished with the well, basket, it's good luck. You know some dummies. Well, some, you're talking about the leftover water after wudu? Yeah, yeah. It no. goes over your kadin? Yeah. It yeah. goes over your uh, clothing? Yeah. Yeah, the, it's okay. There's no problem with that. The, it's okay. it's not, yeah, that's known as uh, mal mustamul water, which is used. You cannot, uh, if water that you used for wudu, for example, you can't use that water and now make wudu again. You that you won't be considered. No, no. I'm talking about that like clean water. You take clean water, just make masa like that. So you flow some, you know, at some part of the flow something is dirty, you know. Just yeah, I've water. I've heard this also. Like if you have any doubt about your clothes, you can basically no, just kind of rub your hand on your clothes. No, no. There's there's no answer for that. I don't know what that is. Okay. Three times with this, no, 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 no. there's no, no, nothing in the Spring the water. Like that. It's just that, it's just that uh, <laughs> there, there, is, there is something mentioned in the Hadith, or there's something the Fuqah have mentioned when a person he uses the bathroom, he does number one, two. He's saying that spill water inside your area. Why? Because sometimes Shaitan puts doubts in our mind. After we have made, made sure we clean everything, doubt comes. Oh, maybe you feel something wet there. Or maybe my wudu broke. So that's why Rasulullah says, sprinkle some water down there. Because yeah. if you sprinkle some water down there, that doubt will remove because you know it's water, it's nothing else. Yeah. So that is maybe some people misunderstood. Maybe some people misunderstood yeah, that or yeah, misheard that. So that's what it is. It's not, it's not about clothing. It's yeah. about inside the clothing after a person does urinate, then you sprinkle some water down there. Yeah. This was mentioned in some to remove the doubts. That, that's so I think that's what it is. We have time for one more question. Yes. If anybody has. Anyone, Anyone has any more questions? One more question. One more question. Sure. I think if you can just clarify the part about the reusage of wudu water where it can't be used. For uh, yes, the water that is used to make wudu. For example, a person uh, takes water and he washes his face with it. So some, I mean, this happened back when they had uh, they would use containers for wudu, right? When they would. Uh, Pull, uh, wash their face with the water and the drops that would fall out of their face or fall off of their face and into for example the tray that they had in front of them you can't use that water to make wudu now somebody else comes and uses that water personally because that water is considered about mustamad you can't attain purity through that but now we don't say that that water is impure then if it goes on your clothes you can't pray salat with that so that is mal mustamad